courses. And actually, I'll show you guys here really quick. So this is Knox 3D website. Um, and I include a link here to, uh, to join us on the Knox, Knox Dev Slack group. Uh, and so you can actually click this button. It'll take you right there to uh, get on Slack. And there's a 3D printing channel uh, we started. Um, so news about this place was uh, hoping uh, more kind of printing tips of, hey, I'm, let's say here in Knox Makers, I'll be here more often. Coming, coming weeks, uh, kind of leveraging some of the experience that some people here at Knox Makers have um, to also help out with, hey, I, I'm thinking about this, and how do I do that? Uh, or, uh, I thought this was really cool. I read this article about printing. printing. Um, you know, what does that think about it? Uh, so it's a really good group um, channel there. We're just in the process of getting that started and getting people on there. So I mentioned Knox Devs. Basically, you go to this website. Uh, you can find out all the different resources here in Arkansas that support software labs and everything else. And Knox 3D3, we're kind of on the edge edge of it, but uh, we're one of the meetups that are on here. And so you can kind of see, like Trey said, all the different meetups that are here in Arkansas. Uh, companies, conferences, other resources. So it's a really good, really good tool. And if there's things that you want to learn more about, um, starting with these meetups are a good, good place to look. Um, okay, cool. So, um, that was a really good part. Oh, sorry. You love this deck of things? Peter might love this slide or not. Okay. Anyway, uh, also I want to talk about so um, this past month, alluded to the previous meetup, uh, Codestock uh, was this big software developer conference uh, here in Arizona, and, and uh, it was a pretty big success. This is it's not the I say it's been a couple years now that Codestock has been around, and there's over 600 developers uh, there in the conference over two days. And uh, there was a lot of exposure for all the meetups that were there. there. And it was, uh, it was really good. Um, a lot of good connections. Saw some other companies, some people who were doing 3D printing in Nashville and other areas. Uh, talking a little about what our group is doing, that kind of thing. So uh, overall, it was a really good experience. Um, so you know, if you're going to check it out this year, you can check it out next year. Uh, it was really neat. I mean, it's not steps things along the OK. So, talk to, talk to you about some Knox devs. Talk to you about some code stock. Um, ah, okay. So, um, there's a thing that came up last week uh, called Make Knox Summit. So, so, so there's this group um, of three individuals in Knoxville um, who, much like people here in Knox Makers, think of Knoxville as a maker town, maker city. And their definition of maker, not only are uh, obvious like many ourselves, um, but also the crafts, artisans, and everything else they're hearing also. So, so they were putting out an event, um, middle of September, September, called the Making Honest Summit. And as you can see here, um, basically, it's a, you can go kind of go online and check it out. Basically, it's about entrepreneurship um, and about where everything kind of fits in, as well as Declaring a Knoxville Maker City uh, with a cool ribbon pending in there, which is kind of neat. Um, and people from Etsy will actually be in Knoxville. Uh, it's going to be a really cool opportunity um, for people to be there. So uh, if you're available at that time, hire a vendor to meet out. There are kind of a couple of things in the meantime that will add in more details to what it will be about. But it seems like a really cool event. Uh, and basically, there will be. Uh, all the different All local businesses and residents that are here in Knoxville will be there. Hopefully, Knox Makers will be there too. Um, reach out there. So, it's going to be a really, really, really neat event. Um, I'm still learning more about what they're doing. But uh, in the meantime, 
you can check out um, their website, uh, makenox.com. And you kind of learn about what they did. So basically, the basic idea was that they really wanted to help make the city, city help, help, help make makers and entrepreneurs uh, develop things in need. So uh, it was really neat. Um, it said basically three individuals, um, one a local maker, one a retailer, and another works for KDC. And they stayed together. And they thought, hey, this would be a really great idea to get put an on that. So they, went, so they went to an Etsy conference in May, and they now want to now put on their own summit, which is in both September. So uh, probably remind you guys before there, once you get more details about it, but it should be something you should really need to check out. OK. And then our next meeting will probably be the end of, end of this month. Uh, put us back in at the end of every Wednesday at the end of each month. So that should be great. Right? OK. So now for some 3D printer news. So uh, uh, this is some feedback, and some people were interested in wanting to know about what kind of news is going on out there relative to the 3D printing world. So, so one of the first, first things that I found out uh, this past month was that um, on the on the printer news, we're taking to not only making great bars and other things, also has a huge heavy truck production and your global worldwide company. Well, one of the things that they just announced that was really interesting was that through SLS, which is a laser sintering process for plastic parts, they want to, and that part process basically takes powder, plastic powder, and produces solid objects. They want to use that to actually print spare parts for the trucks. And so instead of having any more and more parts to store excess parts, they actually want to start, I think, in first with uh, interior, interior components and molds, molds and to set them up that way. So this so is the this first real big uh, uh, use of printer for um, major parts. Uh, and so it's going to be really interesting to see how much they that and, and make some money with money money. Because it's going to be what they're, what they're leveraging and hoping is that they will save on um, the cost of storing all these parts, all these materials, materials as well as distributing the and and games, which we really, really need to see. see. Uh, uh, one of the things, uh, as past month, in, in the, the big picture, uh, bigger parts, is for metal opening. So metal opening, basically, the easiest way to think about it is basically welding in place. You're welding layers after layers. There's a couple different oh, processes that do that. Um, um, we can talk about it in a future meetup. Uh, one of the cool things is, is that right now, you can't uh, have things in it that dissolve. So if you've ever had a chance to print on a 3D printer, uh, let's say a uh, bubble bee here, a uh, plastic printer generally will have a dissolvable plastic that you, that you basically print on top of. So imagine that you cut a part in by layers and you can make an object that doesn't have anything below it. Sometimes you can make a, if you don't have any overhang, you can make Basically, print, print filament that you know you'll just dissolve away later. So this is really the really metal printing to be able to do that. So it's going to be to see where they go. Uh, uh, next big one was that form labs, which uh, there's a there's Netflix, Netflix uh, uh, documentary or documentary on Netflix called uh, 3D it's like uh, about 3D printing. I forget the actual title. They, they um, um, so, so they're, they're not hiring anything. anything. They sell about four, four about printers at about four thousand dollars to five thousand dollar dollar range. So this is more towards people who are with them, or more notably, who are businesses and want to start printing parts for non use. They have uh, they do they they use a photo resin type material, uh, and I have a uh, I have a good slide of it here. Um, um, anyway, it's, anyways, anyway, it's, so this is here is their printer, printer. Um, um, and, uh, and uh, they, they video of it. But basically, what it does, um, um, it takes UV light and scans at each layer, and, and then that actually and then that actually uh, 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 the plastic plastic uh, down. So it's really neat. Uh, so it's really neat. Um, um, I got a link to look out a little more details about what it's about. Um, but, um, but it's really interesting to see them take the next step. What's nice about the printer 
process um, is that it produces really high resolution prints. And so, so for parts, parts that are, um, it's really important, like the very dimensionally uh, tight, to be able to use something like this. Um, so it's, it's really, really neat. Uh, um, they're, one, they're one of the big companies that are trying to change the game. Okay. okay. And then um, there was a big CNC machine that got uh, released recently. This is in the $3,000 range. Uh, uh, the biggest thing about other mills is that it's uh, basically replaces the machine that's about 10 grand. Uh, what's really nice is that it's basically the size of like a bumblebee, a uh, small type printer. Um, but it's really, really dimensionally accurate because uh, it has high end components, uh, which is pretty big. So there's some links there. And then finally, uh, there was this really good article um, this past month uh, about some cybersecurity risks uh, 3D printing. And so as you can imagine, um, as 3D printing is more, more more use and say on the company side, you might have an opportunity where you send a print to a machine that's not your own network. So you're sending over connection to something else. As you can imagine, uh, one of the interesting things was looking at ways of how you can verify that what was sent was what actually was printed. Uh, so it's a really, really good article in there. Um, there's also another article that has some further details about some of the ways to solve some of these challenges. OK, so I've talked to you enough about other stuff. You came here to learn about Fusion 360. So uh, talk about that. So, Fusion 360, what is it? So it's a integrated graphing software, just like you've seen in the past, or may have seen in the past. Uh, but one of the biggest things that makes it different is that it has this platform to be able to store your files uh, online. And it also does where they're moving towards a newer model of software where you, in this case, later on, you're on your devices. And then you can get system updates that will update every month or so. Uh, so what's kind of neat about it is a lot of times with conventional software, say like a different software or other uh, AutoCAD, you may buy an eight-year software, and the next year there will be a completely new software and update uh, that someone else will start using, and then you can no longer use your parts or that, uh, which can make it a challenge in a work environment. So usually, usually like, a lot of things get stuck with the same program for seven, seven years. Or so. so it's nice to see this come. Um, I know it's not a, a shock factor anymore uh, for other software, uh, but in CAD software, this is really unique and really new. Um, so it's really interesting to see. Now, for the benefit of us, uh, as Autodesk has been putting together this software, which again, for Autodesk is a big, big change, because uh, again, they're the ones who usually sell licenses year after year. For a program. In this case, they try in a different, a different way. So, they, what they want to do is basically uh, leverage people who are makers, startups, to basically get in and use this CAD software and help them figure out things along the way that they can make better. And so, one of the things they got that has been one right now is free to use, which is great. Uh, and two, there have been a few updates that have been added. added. Uh, so uh, I'm talking about one of those, those uh, here in a second. So, so before I do that, I want to kind of walk through kind of like down the down the process, process and kind of where you go. Okay, so you go to the website, website, website um, and you kind of see. So basically, what they're doing right now is you can kind of see that they have a uh, the trial that you can use. Um, and that's basically that's kind, of, kind of direction right now. You can basically see what they're doing. Um, so you kind of you see, see the other things they have. And so this is the spot that I want to show. So right now, right now um, um, you basically, basically download the product. And right now, right it's now, for students to use hobbyists like us uh, and startups. So, so basically, basically, once you're in, you basically you register for the account. And then you keep using Fusion 360. Um, so that's what's good for us. Um, obviously, as they're making software that they want to eventually use to sell, there will probably come a day where it's no longer free. But for now, it is. And there's some really, really good tools to use it. 
and it makes it a really great process to start learning how to model. Uh, in future meetups, we'll talk about some other CAD programs you can use. And some and of them have, have different learning curves. Uh, some of them are not as quite as easy to use as this is. Um, so it's a really good, really good thing to use. Uh, OK. So one of the great places to find out about these updates, other than having to download the software, is they have, a, um, okay. they have a website. They have a blog that basically talks about all the things that we're doing. It's called Design for Journey. And uh, basically, it's a combination of both product updates as well as how, how other people are using the software. Uh, so, one of the cool stories they just posted uh, today, actually, was a kind of company that started through a, uh, a Kickstarter campaign. And basically, what they did was this is a startup, so we're like, hey, great, you can use a CAD software. This is beautiful. It basically took the origami approach to making a kayak. So, basically, a long rural kayak. Uh, but then you pulled up the character back back. So one of the things you need to do, obviously, is have a, uh, a good way to model that to be able to produce. Because their challenge was not only the materials needed to make that happen, but also a really good model that could then be reproduced uh, in May. And so they have a good story about it and kind of read along, but they, um, they basically got to use a lot of the tools that are in the future 60. And not only that we'll you know, cover tonight, but uh, there's a lot of things you can do with it, which is really great, uh, and especially it being a really low barrier entry right now to start with, which is great. Um, so um, I think now I will kind of walk you through um, an example to kind of work with. So let me first orient you uh, with kind of what you see here. So what you see here is, so this is basically once you've loaded August 360, you log in and kind of get it. Uh, so I kind of walked through. So basically you kind of have these models up here. Um, and you basically have this sketch area, as you can see. Um, so I kind of walked So you have these views you can look at, different orientations. And it's really nice to use. And you can get back to a home and start looking around. So, so obviously you can do to create stuff. So how do you create something? Well, basically you go to create and let's say you say you have a box. Uh, it ask you like what plane you want to draw on, and you're like, okay, sure. And then you, just, you start drawing. Let's say you want to put some measurements in, but at the moment you just want to draw something over. You're like, okay. And then I want to make it whatever height. And so as you can see. In a couple of clicks, I've already started to draw something. So what's nice is, uh, okay, so let's say you make it this high. Let's say you make it more. Yeah. So one of the things about it is a couple other programs that you kind of have to walk, walk through. through like, all right, all right. Get on the right sketch plane and start making our sketch. Go out. Go out. Use another command to extrude and make things. What's nice about this is that the clicks you're in, you can use it. But let's say you want to modify it. Say you want to, I don't know, do face fillets or something like that. You want to make something that's smooth. Um, let's see here. Let's see. It's you know, boom, there you go. And start doing that. So, okay, so now you're like, all right, so. So far, I went in, drew something, I didn't add dimensions, but, and then I just did something to it. What if I want to go back or I did something wrong? Uh, one of the nice features about Fusion 360 is that kind of down here in the bottom, it basically has a running timeline of everything you've done. And so, in some other um, softwares, it's not as apparent kind of what steps you've done or kind of where you go. Now, now, some of the commercial, commercial ones do have that ability to kind of see what you've done and where you've kind of gone. But what's nice is that you can actually just click other ones, roll them back, and then you can also see what you did. So, so there's, there's some, some other things you can do. Um, yeah, yeah, so, so 
And then basically from there, um, there are a couple different things you can do. So obviously you can keep adding shapes and drawing them. Um, you can, like I said, like we just did, you can start modifying and doing parts uh, with screen deep. Um, and then you can also, um, what's cool about it is, is say, say you work up, you work up your way, look at your way, you add a couple shapes, and you want to start making them into a full cool assembly. So you want to take these parts and put them together. Uh, what's nice in user 60 is that you can do that all in the same place. Um, typically in a, say a SolidWorks or an AutoCAD, uh, you would have to make another, you have another, you have to save the first parts, then make another um, file to then start putting them in and start doing things with one. Um, so the nice thing about this is that it puts it all in one space, and you can also have an SSS. So let's say I go ahead and I want to make a, um, let's say a sphere in here. And I'm going to make it on this body, and give it a diameter uh, under something. So what I just did, and I <laughs> went through way too quickly, because I just said, I actually did a feature where I made a feature and then I cut into what I just had, um, which is interesting. So you can see now that I just made this really complex part that I couldn't really have modeled otherwise. Done. done. And, and, and only done two clicks. But, but as you just saw, my, my surprise, I did not know what I actually just did. Uh, um, so, so we can take a look at it. Um, kind of basically kind of work down here and kind of see what you did. So that's how we're going back. Um, I can, yeah. And so basically what I was able to do is I was able to do a cut, uh, as you can see there. Let's say I do a, um, say I create a cylinder here, and, okay. So this time I won't click, won't click so fast. Um, um, see that, yeah, a couple of operations that you did. So what it does is it recognizes that, as you saw with the first thing, there was another shape right here. here. Did you want me to come in there? Did you want to join? Do you want to make a body that's just there? And so, so it's like that kind of puts these operations that you already learned for you. Um, a couple other um, CAD programs don't quite make it that easy. It's uh, really nice. So, especially if you're modeling something, you're putting something together, it's a little easier to be a little more creative uh, without having to learn so many steps in the process, uh, which is really nice. So, so in this case, this case I'm now going to intersect it, where now we're making now this really weird uh, uh, shape. shape. So, so now, in like, like a couple clicks, now I have this really weird thing that I wouldn't have been able to do. There was going to be several steps otherwise to kind of come together. Um, so now you're like, okay, okay, so what's the big deal? So let's say that let's say this is a shape that I decided I wanted, and I'm going to say. So what's nice is, um, as I alluded to a little bit before, obviously you can say things like the game or the game. One of the things that's really neat about using your 360 is, let's say you're working on a team with other people, or you're working on multiple machines. You're working on it, 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 and only you have access to it, or wherever you decide to have, you want to have access to it. And so it's nice that you can see like other other projects that I've done too, that we've done in previous meetups. Um, let's just say, you know, so I'm going to add a project, and then I'm going to save uh, this file to that. So, Then, so let's say that now to, we saw that I had some other ones. I can also, also uh, open some files. So let's go to, let's go to this bottom bottom. Things we follow down the line, and, uh, it's pretty sweet. Um, 
So you start, start getting a feel for other things. So uh, what you see here is I looks like a not a not done part, but what you can see is that basically I started. You can see that I here down in the bottom. I started on a sketch, then I extruded, and then I made another sketch, and then started modifying the part. And so just like any other modeling program, you kind of get that chance to kind of start building on it. You can also see on the way what you did. Um, so it's pretty neat to use. Um, you can start adding a lot of details and kind of like that. Um, so it's pretty neat. Mm -hmm. But let's say, all right, so far, what we showed me are really so ideas. Okay. There's anything cool that you can do. So, so we, we, had, we had, I think it was uh, February, we had to do a higher pilot design. It wasn't great, but it was a uh, nice idea to start looking at these. So what you can see here is, um, so, so you can see my two attempts at what I think is hot air balloon. That looks more like a mushroom top. And, but what you can see is that basically I have a couple different shapes that are in here. And they're all, um, it can start, start to learn and kind of look at. Um, they're all here as different bodies. So, I have a canopy, I have my roots, and then I have a very basic box kind of uh, at the bottom. And what I was able to do is that basically with this shape, you can start uh, to do like kind of sculpts where you can basically you can take a face and move it around and do it a little more freeform, uh, which is nice. Uh, and sometimes it's hard to do otherwise. Than that kind of things. So, a lot of things I'm doing with it um, are really neat. Um, so, so now you're like, all right, all right, this is cool. How do I get, how do I get, how do I get, how do I get started? So, uh, one of the things is that they have, um, they have some tutorials. So, as you probably imagine, like any other new software, they want to kind of get you ideas of what things you can do. So, so they really get getting started kind of page, it kind of helps you through some stuff I just showed you. But well, they also have, um, some tutorials, some tutorials uh, as well. So those take you to the website, website and uh, there's some really good tutorials around. So 12 of them that you can do, take a listen to us and I'm going to work through um, which is pretty neat. And, and um, so, so they start with the very basic, as you can see, so like uh, sketching. Uh, so you want to import or other things, take you through that. And go all the way through to the end to more advanced topics of uh, like simulation, uh, which is pretty neat. So one of the cool things for um, people who are engineers and yourself and want to use that program for, they want to not only, not, not only use it to make parts, it I like to also use it to figure out what it's like before they actually send it to be finally made. So what's nice about Future Name 60 is, again, it's a free program right now. There are simulation tools that you can use that are like heat uh, and fluid flow that are basically free to use and, and get some kind of idea from them. Uh, which is really neat because a lot of our programs, um, you pay a lot of money. And that's not to say that the simulation tool here is as good as some of those are, but for the first, first idea of like what I'm doing, uh, it's really nice to get capability here, too. So, so not only can you use simulation like that, you can also see something really cool, cool, which is, is let's say that I have a part and it's going to be made out of metal or something else. And I don't have a $500,000 metal printing machine in my lab. In my lab. I'm having to take somebody to somebody a machine. machine. So I need I to get a hand, 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 hand part two machines to be able to be able to. Make. So, so let's say I have a hand or have someone else there. It actually, it actually has some things where you can actually wash your hands if you actually make that part on a several axis uh, um, machine. So, so it's really cool that you can do that. Uh, again, this is something that's really big in bigger type programs. Um, it's really neat to have uh, this available to you. Um, now, something that's uh, a little more creative, a little more fun, is there's this really good tutorial here on, on sculpting. So, let's say you're a modeler, or let's say uh, like animations or that kind of thing like that. You can actually use this to 
make bodies that are kind of hard to do from a normal like CAD process. So as you can imagine, like making stuff that has very rough shapes, uh, imagine like making like an Iron Man suit or something. You could probably draw part of that, um, but it'd be considerably hard to be able to do that. But if you can pull out to where you kind of freeform pieces, it might help you get to where you want to go, want to go quicker, which is nice to have. So uh, I know it might be a little difficult to kind of have a comparison to. I haven't used a CAD software before. Um, but all these features are things that generally programs do one of or the other. Uh, so it's really nice to have them all together. And it's really nice that there's a building community around it to help you get to, get to learn more about how to use a program uh, and also things you can do with it. Um, so yeah, it's, it's pretty neat. Um, I will I talk quickly about all the new things that they added um, to Fusion 16. Um, that is just kind of So, and, and I hope to, in the near future, in the near future meetup, uh, Toby, one of the people here in Knox Speakers, uh, does 3D scanning. So, for cosplay, which is what he works a lot with, uh, with people who have costumes and everything else. He actually has yeah, a yeah, setup where you can do a full 3D scan, and so, which is pretty neat. And so, one of the things that you can do with that is he can actually, if you have plenty of time, actually print print yourself. Basically, a full model of yourself, print it, and use. So, what that does and how the scanning process works, uh, basically. Do like Microsoft like Connect for an Xbox uh, One console, you can actually yeah. use um, basically video and imaging to actually get a 3D view of a person as you spin, spin them around, uh, or other objects that you would like to look at. Um, so one of the things you can do is, as you can imagine, is you're starting to get all those images together and starting to compile them into, into a full model. Um, you basically get what's called a mesh, which is just a here's a computer's representation of what the surface of something looks like, and I'm going to make that, make that, I'm going to turn that surface I'm getting into a model. Well, what can happen though is sometimes you get surfaces that look. Um, Maybe an example here. Okay, so I say say here for scan. You might have some surfaces that might need some touching up. Let's say the camera couldn't pick up on really important detail inside, mainly because either it couldn't get a full view of it uh, or something else happened along the way. One of the neatest things that Fusion just did, and this was in like the past week as an update, is they basically also put in a full mesh editor inside the film. So you always used to have a different tool that was completely different software to be able to do that. What's nice in 1960 is that now you can do it within the same program. So you can, you can simulate light inside this program, you can make simple objects in this program, you can make complex shapes, you can import stuff and then change it. Um, full models, you can move stuff around. A lot of cool things you can do with it. Um, and, and the nice thing about it is that it all starts with a very simple basis, how to use. Um, so it's, it's really neat. So I'd say, for instance, here, um, this was basically a model that had a uh, hole in it where they wanted to select part of a part of the mesh. They can actually take a file that someone else made and basically delete it, remove it, change it. Anything later that they would see fit. So this also helps, um, helps us as well because Let's say there are parts there are that parts we don't even have time to remodel, or, or uh, we don't have the original parts, we don't know what it actually looks like. We can take other people's parts uh, from online on Thingiverse or Autodesk or Adam features and basically get those parts together. together. Yeah. It's pretty neat. Pretty neat. So, so, and this, so this is another way to help model, model things. things. And then you can actually then take that and print it uh, or build it. So, a lot of neat features that they're, that they're using to add, um, and I think the best way to kind of learn the program is just to kind of get a chance to 
take a look at it, what it offers, and then just start using it, uh, seeing like, what you can do. So anyway, there, more more of the stuff is on there. Uh, uh, really neat. So, so you go so to, like I said, you go to Odyssey, 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 and look for their design differently blog. We'll have updates about what, what the program is doing and changing. Uh, it's really neat. And kind of get a chance to get some other tutorials and how to use it. Uh, but for now, um, there's a great, great, great getting started page. Uh, I'll post this link up in here as well to um, basically kind of start working and sketch it. So uh, that'd be interesting. Is um, if anybody was interested in doing anything tonight, uh, uh, I was thinking we, since Sunspear is in our logo, you know, it's a big part of that. Anybody might get a chance to start drawing on uh, start drawing the basics of. Uh, sense and that can be something that we can do um, remaining time to have, as well as find um, time next time meeting. Uh, next meeting. Uh, uh, thinking of uh, uh, basically just a big sphere, and then kind of your best idea of what things you would want to draw below for a model. Um, we can then have next time to show like what models they produced. We can kind of compare and see like what what you learned. Uh, so yeah, with that, um, do you have any questions? Talk a lot, talk a lot. Yeah. Do you know if you should be open to better files or So, I believe they can open certain types of better files. I believe you should be open to better files. I know in Mentor Winter would open to better files, but Mentor 360 was basically the Autodesk next generation of Mentor. So, you should be able to. Um, now, now, I know with Inventor, you, you can also export parts uh, as a couple of different files that don't lose all the information from that file and be able to import it into it. But, but I know that's something that you should really work on at their team to, to get that in. So you should be able to use Inventor files to do something with them. Yeah. Um, so I go below the down here and it tells me it won't work on a 32 bit machine. Okay. So I hit it the wrong me. But uh, it just tells me that if you tell me what I got to do 3D, what am I going to get by looking at the UD? Okay. So um, I think the biggest thing is that, um, and I don't know 1, 2, 3D very well, um, but, but from what I have seen in different parts of it, 1, 2, 3D will allow you to kind of get started with drawing different shapes, different parts. Um, what these features you can do is, Someone just wanted to start using it. I think uh, it helps you be able to import other parts into you and then kind of use that in your models that you want to make. Um, I want to say that Vision 360 also has a little better in terms of being able to export parts, let's say, to print on Bumblebee um, that 1T3D um, may do, but I'm not as well versed for C3D, so it's something I have to look at beforehand. But I've forgotten about the only the only more sensors for the Any other questions? Um, yeah, so any other or any other ideas that people would like to hear at future meetups or different things that uh, or what you're interested in about, you want to hear more about. Uh, we'll have some other talks and some other stuff. So, um, use pre um I haven't yet done a lot of toolpath uh, things with it though. Um, so that's something that we could definitely take a look at. Uh, but I, I know I, I know I haven't. I'm not sure. Yeah, but something to keep in mind. Okay. 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 All right. Anything else? Anything else? All right. All right. Thanks Thank for coming, everybody. Thank you.